Hi all, welcome to the session of gauge blocks. Gauge blocks are otherwise known as slip gauges or Johansson gauges or jaw blocks. So these slip gauges are extremely accurate and precise steel blocks and these are available in a box set uh, having a number of pieces. Uh, there is a wide range of sizes to check dimensional accuracy or accuracy of measuring instruments. So, it depends on the standards, the number of pieces may vary. Slip cages are in rectangular in shape, and this is made of steel having a cross section of about 30 by 10 mm. 30 by 10 mm means length will be 30 mm and the width will be. 10 mm and by combining gauges selected because we need to make a dimension by combining or stacking different numbers of gauges so that is uh, known as uh, built up of otherwise stacking of gauges here we are discussing some uh, features of uh, slip gauges and these are made from high grade steel, cemented carbides such as tungsten carbide or tantalum carbide. Then the coefficient of thermal expansion will be minimum for these kinds of gauges. So it will be in the range of 11.5 plus or minus 1.5 into 10 raised to minus 6 per degree Celsius between 10 degree Celsius and 30 degree Celsius. So we need to preserve this gauges within 10 degree and 30 degree celsius for inspection purposes and these are hardened throughout and suitably heat treated in order to stabilize their dimensions and or are provided with the hard measuring faces like a carpet faces and the hardness will be in the range of 800 hv hv is wicker's pyramid number the standard of hardness and here we are discussing about the uses of slip gauges and this may be used as reference standards for transferring the dimensions of unit of length from primary standard to gauge blocks of lower accuracy that is one application of slip gauges and the second one is for verification and graduation of measuring apparatus especially uh, for example uh, we can check a micrometer using a slip gauges of non value and we can adjust the uh, micrometer dials micrometer scales then next is the length measures for uh, regulation and adjustment of indicating measuring apparatus then direct measurement of linear dimensions of industrial component there some gaps can be uh, we can measure using slip gauges or height also can be used we can measure using or compare the height with the non value of slip gauges then finally they are used as a reference for setting of measuring equipment such as micrometer gap gauges sign bars dial indicators etc then on accuracy of slip gauges slip gauges are classified according to their guaranteed accuracy so there are uh, some grades that is one is AA grade another one is A grade and another one is B so AA means slip gauges uh, that is accurate to plus or minus 2 microns per meter and uh, for A grade uh, the accuracy level will be plus or minus 4 microns per meter and for B, it is plus or minus 8 microns per meter. That is the one type of classification of slip gauges. In another grading of uh, slip gauges, uh, different classes are there. Here we can have grade 2, grade 1, grade 0, and grade uh, double zero. So grade 2 is the workshop grade. This one we are used in workshop because this is having less accurate so it is used in uh, workshop and grade 1 is for more precise work 
than in workshop especially in tool room tool room is a place where we are carrying out uh, precise jobs then grade 0 is more commonly as inspection grade so inspection grade is more uh, precise than the workshop and uh, tool room uh, grades or gauges then uh, grade zero zero this grade would be kept in standard room uh, and would be kept for work of highest precision only we are using it uh, very rarely only for very high precise works we are taking it out from the standard room otherwise it will be preserved in standard room next is a ringing okay ringing is the most uh, important term associated with gauge blocks ringing means it is uh, defined as like this ringing is the process of sliding two blocks together so that their faces lightly bought because uh, we need to stack uh, the slip cages this is a uh, slip cage number one two three four these are of different sizes and uh, after stacking we will get a height which okay we so for the required height we are stacking uh, a number of slip gauges together and while stacking we need to eliminate the gap between the joints because some small gap will be present in almost all the uh, joining of metals each other but in this case uh, these faces are very highly finished so we can eliminate the air gap between them then only we will get uh, the accurate uh, height okay so that process is known as ringing so here it is explaining the procedure of uh, ringing so in ringing uh, we have to choose two slip cages and it has to be get perpendicular as in this picture and uh, what uh, I mean, we have to uh, give a small pressure in between uh, these two uh, that means it has to be pressed to each other with a moderate pressure then first we have to slide in vertical direction okay one over the other then after making almost a same cross like this then without uh, releasing that pressure we have to give a slight rotating movement in this fashion so uh, after rotating what will happen it will be uh, like, look like this so two will be stacked like this so by doing this uh, we can have a uh, what to tell uh, uh, there is a bond between these two and because of that one that will be sticking each other okay so that is known as uh, ringing so now we can tell that these two slip cages are rung together and here what is happening this phenomenon of ringing occurs due to molecular adhesion between a liquid film and the matting surface that is what actually happening in between the contact surface uh, the silicon or filtered kerosene is used as the lubricant okay this liquid film for making that liquid film we are either using silicon or filtered kerosene we are not at all using uh, oils okay. uh, oils we may uh, give some gap so that we actually prevent the adhesion between the surfaces so we have to uh, remove all the oil from the surface then we have to apply silicon or filtered kerosene between the surfaces as mentioned earlier the slip cages are available in sets so this one is actually an example of uh, a slip cage set containing total of 88 blocks and it is interpreted like this we have got one block of 1.0005 millimeter and other ranges are also specified it will be read like this it is 2.001 to 2.009 in steps of 0 0.001 and there will be a total of nine blocks and so on and the total will be 88 block so that is the idea of reading all the blocks in a set then uh, this is an example okay we this is the dimension we need to make using 
a slip case for getting a diameter of 29.758 mm. So using this uh, gauge block set, how we will make this one? So that will, uh, will be explained one by one. So it is 20, first we have to write 29.758. Okay. So we need to choose the smallest slip gauge to highest slip gauge. So the smallest will be, uh, we know that uh, we have to take from the second range and uh, that is uh, started from 2 and uh, we can have 0, 0, 8. So this will be our first slip gauge and we have to deduct it from the, our uh, required dimension. Then, then it will be 27.75. Okay, then we have to choose the second one. Uh, that should be from this uh, row and that will be 2.25 we can choose 2.25 because we can uh, it is available up to point 2.49 only so uh, in between 2.01 and 2.49 we can have a slip gauge of 2.25 so that is our second slip gauge again we have to detect so it is 0 and it is 5 and it again it is 25 now we have to eliminate another one so from uh, this row we have to choose and it is from 0.5 to 9.5 so uh, in this range we can choose 5.5 and deduct so 5.5 is our third slip gauge so that is again 0, 0. then it is 20 and 20 is available in this range that is 10 to 100 is available so from there we will choose the 20 and that will be our fourth slip gauge so we have got a stack of 2.008 2.25 5.5 and 20 so this is how uh, we are making the required dimensions thank you for watching